So uh, I'm going to actually uh, talk to you about this new Center for Urban Science and Progress uh, that we are, uh, we're about 15 months into it. Uh, whoops, there we go. Uh, so we are part of the Applied Sciences New York City uh, initiative that Mayor Bloomberg uh, put together. Uh, the one that everybody has heard about is uh, the Cornell Technion uh, campus that's going to be built on Roosevelt Island. Uh, we sort of are the second award in this process, and then Columbia University has another award, so there's sort of three in the program. Uh, so we started on uh, April 23rd. My boss is standing back here in the corner, uh, Steve Coonan, former Undersecretary of Science, um, uh, well out of the way of all the uh, political types. Um, so we are a, a uh, 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 this complicated partnership <clears throat> of uh, a group of, of universities. Uh, the, the three that are most engaged with us are uh, City University of New York, uh, our neighbor, uh, uh, University of Toronto and University of Warwick in the UK. Uh, we have a bunch of industrial partners, the three major ones, IBM, uh, oops, Microsoft and Xerox. Um, uh, Cisco is sort of stepping up in a different way. Uh, we brought in uh, four of the, the national labs, uh, the three weapons labs, and Brookhaven out on uh, Long Island close to us. And then we are designed to couple into the, uh, the municipal agencies as well as uh, a couple of state agencies, so the Metropolitan Transportation Authority, which runs the subways, the buses, uh, so forth, and the Port Authority of New York and New Jersey. Uh, and what we are, what our intention to do is bring together uh, sort of the, the informatics uh, opportunities and, and focus on issues that matter to these uh, uh, city and regional government, uh, governmental agencies. So we are, we're trying to build out this, this uh, public-private partnership uh, that'll, that'll focus on uh, New York City as sort of a lab uh, uh, and, and try to do things that make the city more livable, more efficient, more resilient. Uh, there we go. So uh, we're, we're sort of inspired by this issue of um, uh, increasing urbanization throughout the world. Uh, North America is already the most urbanized of, of the continents. We are currently at about... Um, 79% uh, in North, North America were well on our way to, to near 90% uh, urbanization, and the rest of the world is starting to catch up. Um, obviously, there's this, you know, don't need to tell any of you in this room, but, uh, you know, massive opportunities uh, with uh, the exploding uh, information technology, informatics capabilities. So what is our real ambition from a sort of a technical perspective is to know everything we possibly can about New York City. Um, so we want to know as much as, as possible about the infrastructure, its state, and how it's being used. Uh, we want to know everything we can about the environment, uh, uh, the meteorology, the pollution, trans, you know, transportation and fate of things, what's the status of the flora and the fauna. In, in the environment, and then everything we can about the people. What are they doing? Where are they, you know, how, are, how are they moving through the city? How are they using the resources, both the infrastructure resources and the uh, uh, sort of mass flows? And then how is information flowing between them? And so the, the real, you know, the, the, the purpose behind this, obviously we're in academia, and so there is sort of the scientific knowledge, but we think that there are enormous... Uh, opportunities for improving the way that, that municipal government delivers services to the citizens uh, of the city um, and that you can develop better operations of, of your infrastructure systems, you can develop uh, uh, you know, much better informed policies and uh, sort of regulate things with a potentially lighter touch if you, know, if you have better information for doing that. So uh, we are, to give you a, an example of some of the data that we, we currently have and the, uh, uh, and the things that we think we can do with it, um, the, uh, the yellow cab fleet in New York City, uh, about 13,000 vehicles, uh, the Taxi and Limousine Commission, which is the regulatory body that oversees them, uh, has uh, mandated that each one of them uh, has a GPS uh, tracker on it, and that they relay information back on 
when and where they pick up a fare, when and where they drop that off, what the fare is and what the, ta and what the tip is. And so just by virtue of knowing the, the, those basic statistics, you can start sort of plotting out of the rides and those, the pattern of rides over the day uh, and over the year tell you something about the operation of, uh, the ta of the taxi fleet. The taxis are overwhelmingly within Manhattan rather than the outer boroughs, so they function as a sensor, an, uh, an unintentional sensor of uh, movement within Manhattan. And so just, you know, this is just plotting up the numbers, you can see things like the, the weekly pattern, you can see major holidays like the 4th of July, Memorial Day, Labor Day, you see um, Thanksgiving with a long recovery because that's a four day weekend. You can see uh, major natural events. Uh, uh, this, was, this is the 2011 data. Uh, you can see uh, one of the hurricanes. Um, you see uh, April 2nd and 3rd, which is the half marathon. The reason that you see the half marathon, not the full marathon, is that the half marathon is totally within Manhattan. The full marathon in the fall is, in the, is mostly in the outer boroughs with only a little bit of, of, of the uh, race in Manhattan itself. So, you know, once we start understanding, and now we have, um, we have three years of, of this data, we can start, you know, ha being able to model what the anticipated behavior is and then look for uh, the off-normal. Uh, behaviors. We can start seeing um, recovery from traffic interruptions, accidents, stuff like that. Um, so we're starting to figure out what we can, how, you know, what, what we can really know for, about the city from data sets like this. Um, obviously, economists are incredibly interested in this. Just to give you a sense of, of how this sort of how the sensor network uh, uh, functions. Here's a recovery after Sandy uh, in in. Uh, last fall. So you see on Sunday basically the normal traffic pattern uh, for a Sunday um, heat map. Uh, the hurricane actually happened on a Monday uh, and everybody hunkered down knowing that it was coming. Uh, you can see uh, lower Manhattan where the power was out, uh, very little traffic uh, uh, taxi rides. And then you sort of see uh, a recovery. And within a week most of the normal taxi uh, patterns have, have, have returned to something relatively similar uh, to what we would have expected. So, you know, we're, we're now, we just got our hands on the data, we're just starting to chew around on it and, and figure out what we can do, but uh, that gives you a sense of what we have. Um, uh, we also have, um, you know, we're going to be trying to get our hands on sort of the normal administrative transactional data that bureaucracies and businesses produce in massive volume. A lot of people are sort of working on that. You know, social scientists have a good 200-year track record uh, in that space. So we will be pulling that in. Um, we want to use these sort of uh, emergent sensor networks. And then we want to import tools and techniques from other areas of science. And so if you're looking at the city as if you're an astronomer, uh, this is a rather simple star field instead of millions of objects and they're all moving with respect to one another or with, with respect to the, the, the telescope. Uh, here's a picture from the top of the Empire State Building looking south. Relatively simple, only uh, tens of thousands of lights, maybe a, uh, the low hundreds of thousands of lights. Um, all the building lights are fixed with respect to one another and so it's very easy to use already well-developed tools out of astronomy to follow those on a regular basis. And I'll talk a little more about why we want to do that. Um, and we can start looking at the city in all sorts of different bands, the optical, the infrared. Uh, and there's stuff that you can see here. Uh, in this building, you can, uh, you can see the different uh, uh, t thermostat settings uh, in, in, within uh, uh, different units of the same building. Uh, you can start sensing different uses of uh, building. So this is a building that we know has a data center in the basement or on the lower levels and you see the heat being exhausted at the top. And then this is uh, 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 public housing units. They're very poorly insulated. Uh, during the winter the temperatures are set very high in the residents. Uh, their only mechanism of heat regulation is actually to open up the windows. Uh, so this is, you know, it's bad for the treasury, that costs money, it's bad for the residents, they're uncomfortable, um, and it's bad for the environment. So um, we think that, you know, we have an opportunity to actually start making some of these urban problems visible, like literally visible, visible in a way that can help policymakers understand where the opportunities are and see if we can start uh, changing 
changing uh, resource allocations and policies that way. Um, and then we can, we can think up all sorts of other ways uh, to, to tackle these issues. Uh, probably uh, mo of most interest are hyperspectral imaging, um, where we'll look at um, the methane bands um, for uh, fugitive natural gas leaks and stuff like that. Um, so here's how, our, how we're sort of, you know, we're, we're, we're building out our research structure. We'll have this sort of core expertise in, um, in informatics, so data acquisition, uh, uh, data integration and, uh, and data analysis. We need people who can uh, build databases, uh, who can uh, deal with structured and unstructured data. Um, we need we are, uh, you know, visualization uh, expertise, um, machine learning uh, expertise, as well as uh, modeling and simulation. Uh, then we'll also build out sort of uh, what we're referring to as domain expertise, people who know something about the actual urban systems, whether it's the transportation infrastructure, public health, uh, et cetera. And then we'll organize ourselves around well-structured projects, sort of a more national lab approach to doing research than the pure atomistic academic uh, uh, type of effort. Uh, our ambition is then um, to be collecting data that can serve the science users, in other words, the social scientists. One of the reasons that we went to NYU rather than to other universities that were recruiting the boss, NYU has a very, very deep bench of expertise in the, show, in the social sciences. Uh, so the, the type of uh, skill set that we're building out is a very good complement uh, to the kind of the questions that those, that those groups have. And then um, I'll be talking about some of the other things that we're building out, a quantified community. Uh, we'll be uh, use, developing our citizen science expertise. In other words, uh, the, the ambitions that we have for data collection uh, and, and measurement uh, are far more than we will ever be able to do, so we have to figure out how to engage the population to uh, collect data on our behalf and do that in a way that is uh, valid, uh, verifiable, and scientifically rigorous. Uh, so we, we've sort of uh, uh, set a very high bar for ourselves. So uh, at the moment, um, we're, we're sort of build, starting to build out our, our core facilities. Obviously, we need uh, a, a well-structured data warehouse. Um, we have to design all of our data access policies, our, our data security policies. Um, we have to, we're in the, the midst of actually getting uh, networking uh, connections to our machines, all that sort of very mundane kind of stuff. Um, uh, then these sort of uh, other facilities, the urban observatory, uh, the quantified community that I'll talk about, and then we need uh, a, a really robust uh, simulation and modeling uh, capability because uh, we need to be able to integrate all of these very disparate data feeds and make sure that, they are, uh, that our understanding is uh, coherent um, and that we're not uh, uh, saying things that are that are in conflict with one another uh, as we go th forward. So the urban observatory uh, here, uh, this as I, as I mentioned before, the the goal here is to uh, bring new sensing technologies to urban urban issues, uh, the kinds of stuff that your average either civil engineer or public health expert or sociologist would never think to do, and so. Uh, the advantage that we have in New York City, lots of tall buildings, um, and we can put uh, cameras, instruments on the tops of those buildings, uh, and then look at major sections of, of the city. Uh, we are located physically in, Brook in downtown Brooklyn, and uh, there is a small group of very tall buildings there, and we have agreements with some of those uh, developers uh, to let us put uh, instrumentation on the, on the tops. That gives us a phenomenal view shed, both of Brooklyn, of uh, eastern Queens, and uh, of uh, midtown Manhattan and below. Uh, and so we, we have, uh, we have some, some uh, great opportunities there. We're not constrained, as you would be, with satellite imagery in terms of uh, weight, power, data, data streams. Um, so we can, uh, and we don't have the issue of flying over uh, periodically, so we can watch persistently. And we have these, these large, large fields of view. And so uh, we're, we're at, again, we're, we are just building ourselves out. 
uh, and we're starting to evaluate where the actual real scientific opportunities are in the various uh, modalities that we could use. Obviously, we're going to first put up optical, then we'll put up infrared, then we'll probably uh, hyperspectral uh, or LIDAR, depending upon uh, what comes, uh, what we think is the next opportunity. Um, and start to, start to measure uh, a broad range of, of things here, um, uh, uh, meteorology, uh, geometry, uh, et cetera. Um, let me give you a sense of what we've done so far again. And I, I will say this a few times, obviously privacy is an enormous, enormous issue. This is our Achilles heel. If we don't get it right, we're, you know, we're done before we've even started. Um, so we did one test uh, uh, run with this and um, we we're building out and we're getting IRB approval, we're building out a, a privacy advisory committee, we're doing some other stuff like that. We take the privacy issues extraordinarily, extraordinarily seriously. Um, but with this, um, it's basically it's a time elapse film. Um, we're, we had an 8 megapixel camera, we're pulling images every, uh, basically every two a minute. Uh, we did it overnight, and the lunar phase, uh, it, which is important for the shadowing, is, was at three quarters. So here's what we did. I'm not, I'm not going to show you the film, but that's the image uh, that we see. We just put it up in our offices, pointed the camera across it at Midtown. Um, the, uh, the Bank of America building, if I can. So this is the Bank of America building here. Uh, uh, this is, New, I think this is New York Life. Uh, I can't remember what that one is. Uh, but uh, and then here are those uh, here this, these are uh, the the some of the housing uh, these these are the Alfred E Smith housing projects that you saw glowing red in that infrared image. Uh, uh, Steve Brumbley at, at, at Brumby at, at Los Alamos was at one of our workshops. Did uh, pulled 144 uh, points out of each of the eight eight million pixels, uh, and then did k-mean clustering on them. Uh, turns out 12 clusters is the, is the optimal for pulling out the information. This, this is the cluster uh, image here. <clears throat> the, the green is the background. The red is the shadowing due to the lunar, lunar phase. And then all the other colors are the other uh, clusters. And so uh, we, out of those 12, there were three that we thought were actually really relevant. And so here they are. Um, you can see. Uh, the, the, in yellow are the actual pixels that belong to that cluster. So in this case, um, let me see. You see, uh, oh, and, and the, this is midnight, and so it's sort of, um, I think, 7 p.m. to 8 a.m. is the window. So you see lights coming on, they sort of step up in half hour increments and step down in half hour increments. Uh, and they are mainly in residential buildings. So we think that that's people watching television. Um, uh, then over here, uh, you see these broad horizontal bands, primarily in commercial buildings and, and centered at midnight. So we think that those are the cleaning crews. Um, here you've got uh, very little activity, and this is uh, starting to turn on at about 4.35 in the morning, and the, uh, the band, the, that cluster is uh, full floors, and uh, so this is Bank of America building, and this is another financial building, um, and we think that those are the trading floors uh, coming on in sync with London. And so this, this was an hour's worth of analysis and a and very short discussion, so we're, we're starting to figure out you know, what we can do with this. One of the main interests that we have, um, a bunch of us having come from the Department of Energy, uh, with this technology, we can sort of, uh, you know, we're undergoing a, a revolution in lighting technologies. So if you do the spectroscopic analysis on this, we can actually start watching new lighting technologies penetrate the city. Um, so you can see the transition from incandescent to compact, uh, to traditional fluorescent to compact fluorescent to halogen to LED. Then correlating what we see in those images with what we know from other city databases, we can know there is an, an enormous amount uh, that's already known about what goes on in each of these buildings. And so we can start understanding the diffusion of technology and then what you can do in, to change that diffusion. What is it that 
that makes somebody an early adopter? What is something that makes somebody a lagging adopter? Are there policy, uh, fine-grained policies that you can design to incentivize that switchover in lighting technology? So we think there's an enormous, just from a pure uh, uh, sort of uh, building operations and use, uh, we think that this is an enormous opportunity that bridges the, the sort of the, the calculated potential savings uh, and we can start understanding what it is in reality that starts affecting how people uh, use technologies, how, what, why they adopt them, and then why the difference between how something should work and how it does work in practice. Uh, and, and then, you know, there is an enormous uh, amount of information depending upon the frequency with which you sample. Um, very, very, very high frequencies. We think that there are opportunities to actually see uh, transients from other plug loads uh, in the light. You know, so when your refrigerator turns on, you get a little flicker in your lights. We're all familiar with that. Um, if you follow, you know, at a sort of you know, a few times a second, we can start seeing behavioral issues. So we, again, we have to be extraordinarily, extraordinarily careful in, de, in figuring out how we use this. Um, but we think that this is a, this is an area that has enormous potential uh, for scientific payoff in very, very policy relevant ways. Quantified community, this is the next piece that we're building out. So where with the urban observatory, we're interested in looking persistently and wide field of view. Uh, with the, the quantified community, we're interested in taking a very, very small piece of the city and instrumenting it to the maximum extent that possible. Uh, so this is a discussion uh, that we're engaged in right now with a major developer in New York City who is uh, developing one of the largest uh, 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 properties uh, in Manhattan at the moment. Um, and so it would be a... <coughs> Um, be an area that has uh, about probably 5,000, it would be a mixed uh, commercial residential uh, development, uh, maybe five, 10,000 residents um, swing up to, you know, add 20 or 30,000 people uh, in the commercial space. And we would try to um, uh, follow uh, the, the, the use of the infrastructure. Uh, mass flows, uh, people flows, et cetera. Uh, and then to give you a sense of what we could do, uh, you know, or what, we're, what our ambition is, we obviously, uh, we're in the, de the design phase of this, so we can't do any of this yet. Uh, we want to look at our resource consumption in, in the buildings, indoor air quality, productivity, how are the buildings used, and what are the, what are the factors that influence uh, employee productivity or the livability of those spaces? Uh, what can we, you know, what can we understand about that? Uh, you know, how, how, what, are, what are uh, the health status of people in that space? How is the, <coughs> how is the infrastructure performing? Uh, waste, power, uh, stormwater. Um, how is the, what is this, the, the safety and security uh, of, of the, of this part of the city look like? Um, how is, how are uh, the, the, the living components? Uh, plants, uh, birds, etc. How are they? How are they functioning or, uh, and, and behaving? What is the? What's the soundscape like? What's the the, the climate uh, relative to uh, other parts of the city? What's the pollution like? And then what are the people doing? Uh, and so this is a this is a discussion that is just getting started. Uh, but um, uh, at least. Lots of people are, are, are very interested in this. And, and so, again, I bring back the point, you know, the, the privacy and the data security are very important to this. So people would only be willing to live in a, and work in a space like this if we can assure them that the, that, um, uh, that the, the data is aggregated, that you can't see down to what an individual is doing, and that when that data is collected that we make absolutely sure that it isn't leaking out anywhere. Um, so, in addition to those, um, those sort of major sort of infrastructural facility components, uh, then we're also working on a bunch of projects, or we, we will be working on a bunch of projects uh, that are of interest to the city itself. 
Uh, so New York City uh, is one of the cities that has taken uh, a lead in the open government, open data uh, sort of movement. There's a, an open data NYC portal where uh, they have something in excess of 2,000 <coughs> municipal data sets uh, posted and you can pull them down and play with them. They're of, you know, of moderate to low utility at the moment. They're, uh, they're of varying data quality. It's just random data sets that agencies decided to put up there. Um, the, uh, uh, there are all sorts of um, data structure issues. Um, a, a parcel of land in New York City can have about five or six different sort of uh, references. It can be the address, it can be a building lot number that the Department of Buildings has, it could be a tax ID number, blah, blah, blah. Um, so making, registering all of those so that, that, that you can actually find the same thing among all the different data sets is extraordinarily complicated. Uh, so we're trying to figure out how to, how to do that and the city itself is very interested in that. <clears throat> uh, just using those existing data sets, making them interoperable, there's an enormous amount of stuff that you can do uh, to uh, improve resource allocation simply by doing cross-correlations between uh, data sets that different agencies have. Um, Mike Flowers, who is the chief data, uh, or chief analytics officer for the city of New York, <coughs> excuse me, um, uh, is a former prosecutor who has done a lot of work on figuring out how to better target the enforcement tools of the city. Um, and so by, uh, he, he was very interested in figuring out how to improve the hit rate <coughs> um, for building inspectors who are trying to vacate illegal conversions. So in New York City, this is the kind of thing where a building that is designed and built to say house 30 people because of uh, illegal subdivisions of those apartments uh, will have 60, 70 people in there. They're fire hazards. <coughs> uh, and so he was able to um, improve the rate at which when you send an inspector out to one of those buildings, the order that they can issue to vacate that building is sort of the measure of success. Um, uh, by combining multiple data sets from uh, uh, ambulance use, uh, uh, building inspectors, health inspector complaints, you know, so complaints about rats, uh, noise, things like that. Uh, and then coupling that with statistics about the number of firefighters who would lose their lives in responding to a fire in these illegal conversions, uh, was able to convince the, the buildings department and the fire department to work together. They were able to increase the hit rate to over 80% when they sent an inspector out, <coughs> which means a much more efficient use of the city resources. And better outcome for the citizens, who were being abused or you know taken advantage of in situations like that, and we had fewer firefighters uh, losing their lives, which is for the city itself uh, the ultimate measure of success. Um, we're interested in understanding better the the soundscape of the city. Um, <coughs> whoops, excuse me. Um, uh, noise is the biggest single uh, complaint to um, the non-emergency complaint line that the city runs. <laughs> something about 40 percent. Um, so we think there's a, a, a quality of life issue in, in making, um, potentially improving the enforcement of, of uh, the noise uh, pollution regulations. <coughs> but there's also uh, literature that associates high noise environments and adverse health outcomes and it's not particularly well understood so we think there's an opportunity to increase uh, the actual uh, scientific understanding of how uh, uh, how, how high noise environments uh, uh, have their effect. We're very interested in issues of mobility. How does the city, how do, how do things and people move around uh, New York City and what can one do that are non-civil, you know, non-civil construction uh, approaches to improving that? Can you change lighting, uh, uh, the timing of the lights? Can you do things to induce people to move between different modes of transportation more efficiently? Uh, et cetera. Um, <coughs> we'll talk about some of the novel sensing of public health, and then I alluded to the building energy efficiency. So I'll run through these uh, pretty quickly. So the noise project, this is one that we're just starting up. Uh, we've hired our first two postdocs, and they'll start uh, in September. 
Um, we are going to uh, go out and start uh, actually uh, just putting uh, microphones uh, around and start sampling uh, uh, that. We have to, we have some um, challenge of figuring out exactly, you know, Quali the, the trade-off between the quality of the microphone and, and your ability to characterize uh, the, the, uh, the sound, decompose it into the basic uh, uh, source, source allocation. <coughs> um, let's see. Uh, we will, we're, we're likely to start in Union Square, uh, which is over by the main NYU campus. There are a lot of bars there where a lot of our undergrads go and make a lot of noise. Um, so we're, you know, there's, there's that uh, sort of little political overlay that we may be able to actually uh, do something to help our neighbors. Um, and then uh, once we sort of figure out what the basic deployment mechanism is, then we think that we can start sort of scaling that up. And we can probably cover most of Manhattan with less than 6,000 uh, microphones. <laughs> so the, 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 the scale of the data is, is not that enormous. Um, so, uh, and, and then we've also started um, uh, um, uh, a panel uh, to sort of uh, give us some, some input on, on uh, the, 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 the privacy and, and uh, policy considerations of doing this. <coughs> the building informatics uh, program, uh, this is one that's, uh, that, uh, uh, again, New York City, we're, we're, we're very advantaged in this. Uh, New York City, uh, a couple of years ago, passed something called Local Law 84 that mandates um, energy disclosure by all buildings over 50,000 square feet. This is residential and commercial. Um, <coughs> and, uh, and then you can start correlating that with what's uh, known about uh, what's, what, the occupancy of, of the, those buildings. That's the, this thing called the Pluto database uh, with information from the finance department on taxes and property valuations, um, uh, the Department of Buildings on the basic physical uh, infrastructure, um, city planning, I don't remember what they have. Uh, so, w but we can start understanding uh, what the actual distribution of uh, sort of energy uh, consumption uh, by buildings are and then start digging into that. Um, one of the biggest uh, uh, users of, of energy in, in New York City is, is Columbia University. Um, but I, um, that actually makes a lot of sense given a lot of the uh, scientific equipment that's up there. Uh, they have a small fusion reactor. Um, they have some uh, uh, cryo-electromicroscopes. They have a great collection of NMR spectrometers. Um, so <coughs> that, that we can start to understand. Um, down here where you've got Rockefeller Center and some of the retail uh, uh, districts that might be the kind of stuff where you know in the summer they uh, try to air condition the entire uh, great outdoors by uh, uh, and and as you walk by the the, bl the blast of cool air is supposed to entice you in um, that may not be the most environmentally uh, friendly thing to do and so we think <coughs> we can start um, uh, sort of parsing these different uses in a very fine-grained way and uh, using that to um, design uh, incentives or, or policy uh, 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 controls uh, f and, and bring down the total net uh, energy use of the city. Um, the urban microbiome project, uh, this is the novel sensing of, of uh, public health. Um, our deputy director for research uh, used to run the, uh, the Office of Biological and Environmental Research in the Office of Science. Um, that's the office that started the Human Genome Project. And so Ari Petrinos is very well connected to and helped support the development of environmental microbiology uh, uh, when he was at the department. And as the cost of sequencing plummets, um, we think that there are enormous opportunities to actually follow the, um, the, the gut microbes of everybody. Uh, and we're not interested in human DNA. We're actually interested in the microbial DNA. And if we pull samples from the sewer, um, we can, we think that there's an opportunity to, to associate what the, the microbial populations with something about public health. And the sewers are natural integrators. They're integrating at the building level, the block level, the neighborhood level, uh, you know, major, major uh, parts of, of New York City. And, uh, and you can do that as often as you want. 
it's a lot cheaper than um, actually going out and, uh, and, and a lot less intrusive than going out and drawing blood samples or having to survey people as to their health status or uh, intrude into their individual medical records. So it's a naturally uh, sort of anonymous way of, um, of following uh, public health. So uh, we think that, that's, that this is going to be uh, a, a really interesting opportunity and we just received uh, a small startup uh, planning grant uh, in the university, from the university uh, in concert with uh, the Genomic Center at, uh, uh, at NYU to, to get this project off the ground. Um, so we think that, there, again, there's enormous opportunities in this, in this space. Uh, and uh, again, privacy and confidentiality, uh, we are trying to get out in front of this issue. We know it is an enormous topic of concern. Um, it's also our major vulnerability. And so uh, we have sponsored a book uh, that will be coming out next summer on privacy and confidentiality uh, in, the, in the use of big data. Uh, the lead editor is a woman who set up the uh, helped set up the National Opinion Research Center at University of Chicago and then went to Census. Um, she put it out, she was one of the editors of a book in 2001 on privacy and confidentiality for statistical agencies. Uh, a lot of the issues that uh, federal agencies faced now, uh, universities, businesses, all sorts of groups uh, face as well. Um, she put together a very impressive group of editors. Cambridge University Press picked up this book, and so uh, the, 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 this is well underway. Uh, just give you a sense of the kinds of data that we hope to have. Again. We are at the, we, we just finished our first year where we're sort of designing ourselves and now we're in the inflationary period where we're starting to build ourselves out. Um, but we're talking to a lot of people about data uh, and the kind of data that we'll get. So uh, this, uh, the open data, data set that uh, we're talking to, uh, the agency that, that controls that, uh, the Office of Analytics uh, is gonna help us uh, get that, that data warehouse um, going and we're expecting uh, that at maturity we would be pulling in about a terabyte a day of city data. Uh, we'll be getting, uh, 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 we actually have on hand uh, 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 topographic information from the city. Uh, we have on hand the taxi and limousine uh, issue. We're trying to get our bike share data. That When we mix those two together, that's going to actually be some really interesting uh, results on whether bikes help slow traffic in, in the city. Um, uh, public health data. Uh, there will be, uh, there's our, NYU, other parts of NYU already have public health and education data. Um, we're talking to DOT on, on sensor data and traffic uh, flow data. Um, let's see, TomTom, Tom, uh, which is your little GPS unit on your car. We've got some data from them, uh, so forth. So we're starting, to, we're starting to have a lot of discussions and a lot of interested uh, uh, parties uh, coming to us. And the thing is, as we get every additional data set that we get, sort of the value of that data increases because your ability to correlate between these and all of our focus is on New York City. Uh, so we, we think there's, some, again, it's uh, some pretty interesting opportunities. We just started our master's program. Uh, the first class arrives in the fall, uh, a group of about 25. Uh, it's a mix of uh, sort of the informatics specialties and the domain, the urban systems domain information. Uh, and we have a project course, uh, whoops, a project course that uh, where a city agency will, you know, identify a very specific problem that they have. Uh, they'll provide us the data and then we'll, we'll uh, a, a group of students will start working through it. We have sort of a certificate version of it uh, for our partner universities, Toronto and Warwick in particular. <clears throat> That's sort of uh, one course a semester and then uh, come to New York uh, for the project itself with your cohort of students. Uh, and then in, you know, we hope to hit sort of our full build um, in about uh, five to ten years, uh, at which point we'll have uh, sort of 50 full-time uh, senior researchers, 30 of them will be faculty, including NYU and partner university faculty. Uh, we'll have uh, 20 senior researchers rotating in from the labs and from our industrial partners. Uh, I think our postdoc number is woefully low, uh, but those numbers will be driven by our research dollars. Uh, we'll have a cohort of about 100 PhD students and 430 master students, uh, and then we're located in downtown Brooklyn. So at the moment, um, we are in the process, uh, we're uh, hiring uh, seven postdocs. I think I've got, or no, eight, eight postdocs, and I think I have uh, five of them uh, identified. 
We're looking for a modeling and simulation postdoc. We're looking for a database postdoc. Uh, and I forget what my other one was. Uh, oh, uh, one for the urban observatory. So uh, somebody to uh, either who can do both co computer vision and um, instrumentation would be ideal. Uh, but you know, you guys, as you as you start looking, uh, or finishing up, and start looking for opportunities, uh, hopefully you'll think of us. Uh, you know, the the goal is we think that we have an incredible opportunity uh, to do uh, leading edge uh, informatics, but do it on issues that are relevant to the people of New York City and solve real, tangible, real world problems and do some good science uh, at the same time. So with that, I'll take some questions.